In order to get the most of your DSLR, mirrorless, or video camera, you're going to want to get some new lenses, but which ones to choose? Answering the question is difficult as each digital camera manufacturer offers a large range of lenses of different qualities and budgets. Add to that that each photographer or videographer has their own shooting style and preference, and it can be difficult to navigate the answer of which lens. By the time this video is done, I'll explain six different types of lenses available and give you an understanding of each so you can make an informed decision when buying your own. I'm not going to get into talking about specific lenses, but I do want to give a brief introduction to some of the terms and types of lenses that you'll come across as you begin to explore the DSLR and mirrorless camera lens market. Hi, I'm Jim Costa. I'm a videography, photography, and technology guru. You can call me a dadographer. I've created many other videos on videography, filmmaking, and more, and I'll link to those in the description below and both during and at the end of this video, so stay tuned. If you want to learn more, subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell to be notified when I upload new videos. I upload every week and I'll be uploading many more explanations of video, photo, editing, and technology topics. Stay tuned to the end to find out how to get my free DSLR and mirrorless camera cheat sheet that'll have you shooting with any lens like a pro in no time. Keep in mind that most DSLRs are not what's known as full frame cameras. Their sensors are generally smaller than full frame and as a result, the lenses don't have the same impact on these cameras as they would on a 35 millimeter film camera. This is why you'll often hear manufacturers talking about the equivalent focal length of a lens. Now the first type of lens is known as a fisheye. A fisheye lens, is also known as ultra wide or super wide lenses, is a type of wide angle lens which can capture an extremely wide image typically around 180 degrees. These images that they produce are highly distorted, giving them a dynamic and artistic feel. Fisheye lenses are popular for photographing extremely wide panoramas of landscapes and for shooting close-up objects such as crowds, interiors, and architecture. They are commonly used to photograph action sports such as skateboarding, snowboarding, and surfing. As well as being used for many practical purposes, many artists have adopted them due to the unusual distorted images that they produce. They use them to take intriguing photographs of all types of subjects from still life to portraits. There are two main types of fisheye lenses, circular and full frame. Each produces a very different effect. A circular fisheye lens is one which captures a full 180 degree view in all directions. This results in a circular image with the edges of the frame being black. These more extreme fisheye lenses tend to be used for artistic purposes such as skateboard photography or for shooting unusual landscapes or cityscapes. A full frame fisheye lens only captures a 180 degree view along its diagonal. The field of view along the horizontal and vertical sides of the image are less than 180 degrees, typically around 150 degrees for the horizontal and 100 degrees for the vertical. Although they do not cover such a wide angle, photos taken using a full frame fisheye lens are rectangular and do not have black edges. This makes them more suitable for practical purposes such as traditional landscape photography and shooting building interiors. For cameras with a 35mm sensor or film inside, a typical circular fisheye lens might have a focal length around 8 to 10 millimeters. Full frame lenses have slightly longer focal length, usually 15 or 16 millimeters. Now, number two are wide angle lenses. Simply put, a wide angle lens is one which has a wider angle of view than a normal lens. This allows you to fit more into the frame or to get closer to your subject without chopping the edges off. However, they're not as wide as ultra-wide angle lenses that were described already. They're available 
in a variety of focal lengths. These range from medium wide angles, which give a slightly wider field of view, to extreme wide angles, which distort and warp the image in all sorts of intriguing and abstract ways. Wide angle lenses are ideal for photographing expansive landscapes, cramped interiors, and subjects which wouldn't fit into the field of view of a normal lens, such as a, a large building shot at relatively close range. More severe wide angles are used to give an artistic dynamic edge to a shot, such as in extreme sports photography. Now number three are known as prime lenses. A prime lens is a fixed focal length lens that does not allow you to zoom in or out. The determined focal length of the lens is the distance between the portum convergence in your lens to the sensor or film in your camera. Prime lenses allow a handful of benefits compared to their zoom counterparts. The first and most desirable is the availability of fast apertures. With a fast aperture, a lens is able to maximize the amount of available light by opening its aperture to f2 or f1.2 and even f.95 for the most expensive lenses. Most zoom lenses do not shoot any faster than around f2.8. Being able to shoot at a fast or wide open aperture allows the shooter a more shallow depth of field. Depth of field is the distance between the foreground, the subject, and the background. Shooting wide open gives a narrow depth of field, isolating the subject from its surroundings in terms of the sharpness and clarity. The closer the lens is to the subject, the softer the foreground and background will become. Now if this is making sense to you, put I got it in the comments section below. Now number four are what's known as standard lenses. Now a subset of prime lenses are what's known as standard lenses or sometimes called normal lenses. This is a lens which produces an image that roughly matches what the human eye sees and which looks natural to the viewer. It sits between the telephoto lens and the wide angle lens, which produce an unnaturally zoomed in or zoomed out image respectively. Standard lenses have an angle of view around 50 to 55 degrees diagonally. This is roughly the same as the angle that the human eye can comfortably view, which is why it gives a natural looking perspective. Normal lenses make great general purpose lenses and can be used to photograph everything from close-up portraits to landscapes. They tend to be very fast lenses, in other words, they have a wide aperture, making them great for low-light photography. Number five are what's known as telephoto or zoom lenses. A telephoto lens is a type of camera lens designed for taking photographs of subjects at moderate to far distances, also known as tele lenses or long lenses. They are a type of long, focus lens which use a special internal construction to give them a focal length much longer than the length of the lens itself. This makes them smaller, lighter, and easier to handle while still giving excellent long range capabilities. Telephoto lenses are commonly used when photographing sporting events, wildlife, and in many other circumstances where the photographer can get close to the subject. They're also popular in portrait and macro photography as they produce a pleasing natural perspective free from the distortion caused by using a wide-angle lens. Telephoto lenses come in both prime, fixed focal lengths, and zoom varieties. Those with fixed focal lengths tend to be of higher quality, although zoom lenses offer the obvious advantage of greater flexibility. Focal lengths typically start at around 85 millimeters and extend to as much as 800 millimeters and beyond. Longer focal lengths are able to capture more distant detail, but are also more expensive, bigger, and heavier. Now finally, number six are what's known as macro lenses. A macro lens is a camera lens designed for photographing small subjects at very close distances. They can focus much nearer than normal lenses, allowing you to fill the frame with your subject and capture more detail. They're typically used when photographing insects, plants, and small products but are versatile enough to be used in all sorts of situations. Virtually every subject has interesting details which can make for fascinating close-up photos. Although macro lenses are optimized for close-up work, most can focus all the way to infinity and make excellent general use lenses as well. 
Many professionals also use them as a portrait lens due to their ability to capture lots of detail in ultra-sharp focus. The most important property of a macro lens is its magnification ratio, also known as the reproduction ratio. This describes how much of the image will be enlarged in the final image that you create. A magnification ratio of 1 to 1 means that when the camera is positioned at the closest focusing distance, the image formed on the sensor will be the same size as the subject. For this reason, a 1 to 1 ratio is called life size or standard ratios. A lens isn't considered to be true macro unless it can achieve at least a 1 to 1 magnification. Macro camera lenses normally have a fixed focal length, i.e. their prime lenses. There are a few zoom macro lenses available, but they tend to be of low quality and won't achieve such high magnification ratios as prime macro lenses. Most common focal lengths are around 50 millimeters, sometimes 100 or even 180 millimeters, although the exact value will vary based on each manufacturer. Now, you know six different types of lenses available for your DSLR, mirrorless or interchangeable lens video cameras. It's time to go out and get one or two and start shooting great images and videos. My question of the day is, what's the next lens that you want to get? Leave a comment below and let us know. Would you like to learn more about your camera settings to get you shooting like a pro? I've created an absolutely free cheat sheet for you on all the best camera settings for your DSLR mirrorless and video camera that will show you the settings that you need that will allow you to shoot photos and videos that compete with the pros regardless of what lens you use. The link to get that cheat sheet is just below in the video description. I've also created cheat sheets on other topics such as video editing and now even offer training courses on video editing including Adobe Premiere and soon others. I'll link to those cheat sheets and training courses in the co comments below as well. You want to see even more videos like this? Follow my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, for many, many more. Think what you saw was great? Like it. Do you have an opinion? Comment below. Do you know someone who could benefit from the information that I provided? Please share the video. Do you want to learn even more? If so, and connect with Jim Costa Films on social media and online, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and the web. I currently have over 4,280 videos on my YouTube channel, Jim Costa Films, so feel free to check out many of my other videos for great video, film, editing, and technology tips, tricks, and suggestions. If you follow me for a while now, you may know that I have a community of photographers, videographers, and filmmakers just like you on Facebook where I share pro tips and tricks called Video Producers and Content Creators. I love new members who want to share their work and learn from others. You'll find the link to the group in the description below, so feel free to join the group and learn much more.